Well, on today's ISSA alert, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Gavin, welcome to the program. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Uh, I guess we'll call this our Omicron update for today. I know we've done a few of these, but tell us this, Gavin, what's happening with Omicron now that maybe we're not hearing in mainstream media? Yeah, this is really important we focus on this today, Jeff. As an epidemiologist or, or a disease detective, I'm really surprised by the properties of the Omicron variant. Uh, new studies have just been published have suggested the coronavirus has altered the way it infects cells. The other big news to share with everyone, Jeff, is the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. It now appears to be the second most contagious disease, with measles being the first. So what we're seeing right now is the sheer numbers of people that have been infected this week and will be infected next week and even into January 2022 are going to potentially overwhelm so many services, not just the hospitals and the health services. Now, we're seeing that the vaccines will protect us to a, a significant degree from severe symptoms, um, from going into a hospital, for example, and from even from dying. So those vaccines do work. But the Omicron variant has shown increased transmissibility. It's more contagious. And, and how it's penetrated so rapidly into our communities. Uh, and with such a very large number of people getting infected, means that a very small fraction of a very large number of people could go into hospitals and that's going to overwhelm the health system. And so this translates to a significant number of people being hospitalized. Now we're learning all the time about this new virus, Jeff. The, very, the first studies of real world hospitalization data have been published uh, from Scotland and England, and they suggest that the risk of hospitalization due to the Omicron variant may be much low, lower compared to the Delta variant. But the important thing about these studies that have just, just been published, Jeff, is that these studies did not include people over the age of 60 years old. Now, because that's because in countries like England and Scotland, the spread of Omicron started in younger adults. Now, this could change with as, as more people get infected, especially those that are over the age of 60 years. Two other big studies have just been published, Jeff, that I want to talk about today. The University of Hong Kong has found that Omicron was better at infecting the airways, but worse at getting into the deep tissue of the lungs where it could do more damage. Remember, we saw so many COVID patients in 2020 and 2021 with pneumonia. So this is good news that Omicron is better at infecting the airways, upper airways, but worse at getting into the deep tissue of the lungs. The other study, Jeff, is the one from the University of Cambridge in England, where they found the Omicron variant was not as good at fusing lung cells together. Now, this happens when in the lungs of people who become severely ill, and this is more good news. So what we're seeing right now, there's high levels of coronavirus in our communities. It's both Delta and Omicron. Omicron is rapidly, very, very quickly becoming the dominant variant of the coronavirus. Significant action is needed to address these escalating numbers of COVID cases in our communities, our neighborhoods. And it brings increased risk, significant risk for those workers that are involved in essential services like cleaning, staff, employees that have to go to work, must go to work every day. It's amazing how this Omicron is such a new variant and quickly has taken, as we've read in several reports, second place among uh, diseases, measles being the first, as you mentioned. And you touched on the worker safety uh, question I want to ask you. You know, we often think about the cleaning and protecting those in our buildings, those that are working or visiting our buildings. What does the cleaning industry need to know about re regarding protecting the essential workers, their own health and safety? Anything to add to that? So important, Jeff, that everyone understands right now, and I turn this, we need to blitz. We need to increase our efforts significantly to deal with this COVID virus for those uh, workers, those employees that are on the front line, and we, and, you know, we call them the essential workers. They need to be retrained, re-educated. So they're just, they're at the top of their game when it comes to preventing themselves from being infected. 
preventing themselves from being infected, then going back home to their homes and infecting their family and their loved ones. So it's so important that everyone that is an essential worker, especially the cleaning employees, understand that you have to protect your holes, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. To get infected, the coronavirus needs to get inside your body. It gets inside your body through your eyes, nose, and mouth. So wear a mask. I would prefer you wear a KN95 mask or an N95 mask, a mask that fits so you don't have any air escaping out of the edges. And the way you can test this, you put your mask on, you put your hands up close to your face, don't touch the mask, breathe out. And if you feel air escaping out the sides, adjust the mask. Breathe in. If you feel air coming in through the gaps or the sides of the mask, adjust the mask for a better fit. I also recommend highly, Jeff, that you protect the eyes. I wear a face shield, as you know, regularly when I go to work or if I fly on a plane or I'm in a crowded area or even safety goggles. So protect those eyes. Keep those fingers away from your face. That's why we wash those hands the way we do. Continue to wash your hands with soap and water. And if you don't have soap and water, use hand sanitizer. But also it's really important that we're able to tell the story of the things that we are doing to create safe indoor spaces. How are we decreasing the amount of virus in the air? How are we increasing the amount of virus on, in water? Or on how are we increasing the amount of virus on surfaces? We need to be able to tell people what we're doing, why they should have some confidence that what we're doing works, but ensure that it's, it's, it's about protecting the crowd, the herd, the population. And then if all the individuals can, do, can be consistent and do the same thing, then we can continue to do inside events, go indoors and do it safely. But at the moment, Jeff, not everyone's being consistent.